Talking about our coffee pot. Now you're fine to cook because now it's ten. Okay. Then I have a meeting to order if you'd rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so we are using technology and Commissioner Waldham is in Puerto Rico and so you'll see him online. And I talked to JJ last week and one of the things that he mentioned was that it's harder for him to hear us. So if we can move our mics closer to us, that would be great. Um, and Steve Holland was hoping to be able to be with us from Florida, but he um, is not gonna be able to be with us today. So if you have anything to say, we ask that you come to the mic so that everybody that's online can hear you. Do we have any public that would like to speak today? Is there anybody online, Ryan? Right. So then we move on to adopting the agenda. Madam Chair, uh, on consent agenda item number 7C, if we could correct the signature block, it uh, just didn't have your name on it. Mm -hmm. And then if on regular agenda item number three, if we could remove resolution 2024-04, the city of Pine City uh, is not applying for this program this year, so they don't need uh, a resolution of support. And then if we could add uh, to regular agenda item number 3.1, a request for a gambling permit from the Surgeon Lake Lions Club, and Kelly is prepared to speak on that. Numbers that with Dave? Uh, 3.1, okay. the regular agenda. So we have our revised agenda. Can we have a motion to the agenda? I will move the Make a motion. Ended, Madam Chair. Okay, so we have a motion from Matt and a second by JJ. Yes, that's correct, Madam Chair. Roll call vote, Debbie, please. Just two, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 3, Chair Lovegren? Aye. District 4, Commissioner Waldham? Yes. District 5, Commissioner Ludwig? Aye. Thank you. And then we're going to move on to approving the minutes. We've got the minutes in the summary from January 2nd, and then we have the strategic planning minutes from the 9th and the 10th of January. I'll move them. Thanks, Matt. I'll second. Matt and, and Matt. No, sorry. <laughs> Josh and Matt. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? District 3, Chair Lovegren? Aye. District 4, Commissioner Waldham? Yes. District 5, Commissioner Ludwig? Aye. District 2, Commissioner Moore? Aye. Thank you. And then we. Oh, yeah. And then we have um, minutes of the board, the committees, and correspondence. I'll move. Ludwig. Thank you, Matt. I'll second. I have a second by Josh. Are there any um, discussion, questions? If not, District 4, Commissioner Waldham? Yes. District 5, Commissioner Ludwig? Aye. District 2, Commissioner Moore? Aye. District 3, Chair Lovegren? Aye. Thank you. Then we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Anybody had a chance to look at that? So can we have a motion? I'll move the consent agenda. Thanks, Jeff. A second. Thanks, JJ. Is there any discussion? District 3, Commissioner Ludwig? Aye. District, oh, I'm sorry. Did I say, I'm sorry. <laughs> Move me up. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, District two, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District three, Commissioner, uh, Chair Lovegren. Aye. District four, Commissioner Waldham. Yes. Thank you. We're going to go on to the regular agenda and we have a public hearing for the amended fee schedule. You know, Madam Chair, um, Commissioners. So we have a public hearing today scheduled for our fees. 
Um, and so you had a list in your packet of some proposed fees. So annually, I reach out to all the departments and have them review their fees um, and see if there's anything that needs to be changed. We just wanted to walk through our fees and explain the changes. And so probation, um, they have this cognitive skills workbook. And so just the cost that it's costing probation to get those books has increased from $25 to $40. Um, so we're requesting to increase that so that the taxpayers of Pine County aren't subsidizing those workbooks. Um, in the recorder's office, we have two changes. Um, so the beacon daily rate. So currently people can only get a monthly subscription to beacon if they want a subscription. Um, and actually at the um, County Board of Equalization this year, I there was a gentleman who had commented, he's like, well, if I could have had access to this information on Beacon, I could have, you know, I, I would have felt better about my value and things. And so then I started thinking about it. And we do have the ability to implement a daily rate. Um, and so, but we didn't have a fee established for that. And so if we can get that fee established, I can start working with um, the folks at Beacon to set that option up through a credit card payment. Um, also in the recorder's office, the marriage license felony name change. Um, we're just taking away that fee because that was changed in the legislature this year. You just can't do that. So there's no reason to have a fee for it to change your name through the marriage license. Um, in the sheriff's office, and I know Jeff is here so he can follow up on any of these. Um, so the civil process basic fee previously was $60 and $75 depending on location. And so they're wanting to just simplify it down to an even $70 no um, matter where. Um, civil process posting notice was previously $50 and they're requesting to change it to $70. Um, event staffing. So if you recall, um, earlier this year, we signed a contract with um, the, the Mille Lacs Band tribe to provide event staffing and amended our contract with the deputies that they be paid $75 an hour for that event staffing. However, when we charge the casino or whoever's paying us for that event staffing only the $75, they're not covering the payer or the FICA taxes on that we have to pay on top of that. Um, and so while we're gonna charge those folks or we're gonna pay the deputies $75 an hour, I can't only charge the people $75 an hour for those deputies because they need to cover the full cost of those benefits. Um, and so it's a request to change that from $75 to 90. Um, insurance company requests, they're currently $5. I don't know if that was a statute change or what, but we can't charge for those anymore. So just get, getting rid of that fee. Um, and then the fee to do a sheriff sale um, is increasing from 60 to 80. Does anyone have any questions on that sheriff bunch? Because we could grab Jeff if you have further questions. No? Okay. Um, in the veterans office, we previously had two fees listed, a $20 and a $10 um, transportation to medical um, appointment. However, that's not a county fee. Um, that is a fee, a donation that the Pine County Veterans Council takes. Um, so it has nothing to do with Pine County. Yes, Pine County owns those vans. However, the Veterans Council pays for all of the maintenance, all of the upkeep on them. So those donations go to them. Um, so it really shouldn't be on our fee schedule. Yes, those are still going to be a thing, but that's all through the Veterans Council. That's not Pine County. So we're just removing it off of our um, off of our fee schedule. Madam Chair, just a question. Yeah. So who? How is the insurance paid? County or Veteran. Um, well, for the Veterans Council, um, right? Vehicles. Right. So the vehicles, like the county buys the vehicles, but then the Veterans Council fully reimburses us. So they're the ones that pay for the insurance. Right. And the insurance as well. So we pay it. This was the question. Yep. So I invoice them. I have a revolving calendar thing at the end of January where I invoice them and then they pay us back. Okay. Um, and then in zoning, I'm wanting to establish a short-term rental permit. Um, so currently, our if someone has a short-term rental or a VRBO, those are currently going through like our interim use permit process, and they're $600. Um, however, through our Shoreland Ordinance Amendments, that's going to be switching from, if that passes, from an interim use permit to just a like an administrative permit. And so it would really be bringing moving them from that $600 down to $200 because it's not having to go to the zoning board. 
And so I'm just wanting to get that fee established so that we have it ready to go for when or if the ordinance gets passed. Question. Yes. Back to the event zoning change. Are we gonna have to redo the contract or was that language included in the contract? Um, I think that Jeff was supposed to be working on the contract amendment with the tribe. Okay. He's shaking his head, yes. Thank you. I have a question, um, short-term rental permit. Yeah. So a lot of our VRBO, VRBOs are full-time rentals. So uh, is there any difference in Right. No. Um, whether like the people use it part time um, or and then VRBO at the other time or if it's just always a VRBO, it all still falls under that type of permit. Are there any other questions for uh, Kelly? So for the short term, right now, do you got a pretty good handle on them or are you still trying to? Um, I think that we're getting a really good handle on the new ones coming in because people have gotten really good at calling us and saying, what do I need to do? Um, and I think, you know, when we first started regulating those, um, you know, we did our best at coming up with a list and contacting people and getting them um, the permits that they needed. Um, and so I think we're on the track with them. And now I think this is going to be, I'm really excited to make this change of switching it to an administrative permit because Every single time we bring it to an interim use permit hearing, the public input is exactly the same. The criteria that's required is exactly the same. So it it's it to work. Um, and so it's it really doesn't need to be that um, huge process. The zoning um, we can pare it down. I got one other question, and maybe the same. It has nothing to do with the fee schedule, but um, do you happen to know? approximately how many of them are local owned or are they out of, or I mean, I don't uh, have a clue. Yeah. I mean, we could run some reports from the system and see if we could find. Um, yeah. I mean, I think most of them that we have done through the zoning board are not local folks. Yeah. I was just, I mean, and that has nothing to do with the fee schedule. I was just, I just thought of it as I said. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care. Josh is so Typically, I mean, people that don't live in a house, and they are and sometimes it's the three different people. They come to the zoning board, and that's their kind of like an investment. Yeah. So now, what I don't think we know about is if someone leaves, you know, snowbirds or whatever, and then has someone come to their house for a month or a week or whatever it was. I don't know how you would measure that. Right. It was just, I just thought of it. I'll follow up. Right? Yeah, but I think without it being this big daunting public hearing process, um, it will, it'll really invite people to do the right thing and get the permit. Yeah. Um, and I've talked to several of them that want to work in a DRBO and so they're just going to wait because they're like, I don't want to do a big process. Huh? Good. Thank you. Peace. Are there any other questions or discussion for Kelly? Right, then we will open it up to public hearing and take any public testimony. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak about the fee schedule? The fee schedule? No. So this is for the fee schedule. This is a public, this is a public hearing for the fee schedule? Yeah, yeah. Is that a bill public speaking or something? No, that was, that was uh, we've already gone through that. And so you missed out on that. Yeah, I'm sorry. We need to follow the agenda. Um, can you do it after the meeting? The meeting, okay. Yep, thank you. Is there any anybody from the public who would like to speak about the fee schedule? Yeah, I have a question. What was that gentleman's concern that just uh, spoke? He, he missed an opportunity for something? What was that? He came to, to speak for the public hearing, or not the public hearing, but the public earlier. And he missed that, so he's going to be here afterwards, and we'll talk. Um, he'll give us the paperwork afterwards. Okay, yeah, and I would uh, love an opportunity if you would want to call me also. That would be fine. You can call sure, we'll Either share your like number. Both. Yep, share your you. number. Yep. All right. So we are going to close the public hearing. Does the board have any additional discussion on the fee schedule? If not, can we have a motion to adopt the, the updated fee schedule? 
I'll move it. Thanks, Josh. I'll second. Thanks, Matt. So we have a first and second. One more time, any discussion? All right, Debbie, will you do a roll call, please? District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 3, Chair Lovgren. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Waldam. Yes. District 5, Commissioner Ludwig. Aye. Thank you. Chase. Yeah. And we'll move on to the personnel. You do it? Yeah, cool. you can. All right, yeah, we did have a meeting uh, January 8th, and the personnel committee made the following recommendations. Recommended the approval to update the job description for eligibility workers who have specialized training and certification to determine long-term care eligibility and retitle the position to eligibility worker long-term care specialist. Uh, Recommend the approval to regrade the new worker long-term care specialist from grade six to seven. The minimum starting wage for grade six is twenty-two fifteen an hour, and twenty-three forty-nine an hour for the new grade seven. This work is reimbursed at approximately fifty-five percent, and the increase in wages can be managed within the existing budget. Also, recommend the approval to update the job description for eligibility workers that do not determine LTC eligibility to remove the LTC requirements, there is no change in grade or pay. Um, and then I think we'll go, we'll just do them all, I think. Uh, in probation, acknowledge the resignation of probation case aid, Kirsten Jensen, effective January 17, 2024, approve the backfill of the position and any subsequent vacancies that may occur due to internal promotion or lateral transfer. And then administration update policy manual, section 6.1 holidays to note the day after Thanksgiving is the Friday after Thanksgiving rather than the fourth Friday in November. And there is some more information in the minutes there too. With that, I will make a motion to approve that. And I'll second. Okay, so Josh and Matt, is there any questions or discussion on the personnel, or the personnel meeting? If not, will you do a roll call, Deb? District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 3, Chair Lovgren. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Walcam. Yes. District 5, Commissioner Ludwig. Aye. Thank you. So we removed number three for the project sponsor from the agenda, but we have 3.1, which is Andy and the gambling basis. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, Kelly Schroeder, County Auditor Treasurer again. Um, so we have a gambling permit for the Sturgeon area Lake Lions um, to have premises site gambling. So typically that's like pull tabs, bingo type things. Um, and that is at the new Parker Sandbar, which was previously the Red Oak Inn, um, which will be opening soon, it sounds like. Um, and so um, the application is complete. And so I would recommend approval. Any questions for Kelly? Can we have a motion to approve? I'll move that, Madam Chair. Yes. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve that. Right. Okay, we have a motion made by Matt and a second by Josh. Um, any any further discussion? If not, we do roll call, Deputy. please. District 3, Chair Lovgren. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Waldham. Yes. District 5, Commissioner Ludwig. Aye. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. Thank you. We'll move Madam on. Chair. Yes. Yeah, I'd just like to thank Kelly for working to get that uh, squeezed in there today and everybody else that was involved. And thank the Surgeon Lake Lions for able to drive down and take care of that. Thank you. Thank you, Did <laughs> we hear that? What is your name, sir? Jim? Yeah. Jim said Pardon? thank you, JJ. Jim said thank you, JJ. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to move thank on. Thank you, to... Jim. Surgeon Lake Lions are a great organization. <laughs> we're going to move on to considering a special meeting. It would be a special call meeting for the, the fourth Tuesday in February, February 27th at 9. 
in the boardroom down in Pine City for the purpose of discussing the county strategic plan and considering topics and dates for future special meetings. Sir, are there any questions on that or comments? If not, can we have a motion? I can move it. Thanks, Josh. I'll second. Thanks, Matt. Any questions on that meeting? If not, Debbie, can you do a roll call, please? District 4, Commissioner Walden. Yes. District 5, Commissioner Ludwig. Aye. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 3, Chair Lepren. Yes. Thank you. And then we're going to go on to Commissioner updates. And um, Steve is not here for the Solid Waste Commission. The Library Committee, um, we set up our committees for the year and looked at the joint power agreement and everybody was good with what was there. So um, that was really the brunt of our library meeting. Soil and water? Did not attend. Okay. Um, Kettle River, one watershed, one plant? We had our meeting on uh, January 11th. We reviewed our joint powers agreement, went through our first biaminal budgeting, and uh, decided what, what level of involvement that policy committee may have ongoing through the process and kind of have that figured out. Some will be as needed, but generally speaking, it'll be quarterly. Um, and then set the public hearing date for February 20th. At the point we have our county board meeting here at Sandstone to accept their input, the plan. You went really fast with that one. Mm -hmm. With the, yeah. See, yeah. Um, Law Library. Uh, yeah, we did have a meeting last week. Um, we need to pass our budget for the next year. I was going to look at my notes. I did. Uh, I believe it's the same, exactly the same as the last year. And we did um, actually increase our fund balance a little bit. Uh, one other thing we were missing, I can't remember, Reese, was it like two or three books? That added up to fifteen hundred dollars or something like that. It just, but these law books are extremely expensive, and uh, a couple of them didn't get returned. And uh, can't remember it was probate or something like that. Someone was going through, and uh, or that they had checked these books out and uh, never brought them back. So we're actually we're probably going to replace them because we have to. Um, but just kind of, you know, this stuff is extremely extremely expensive. Uh, we kind of did have the conversation about a future meeting about discussing how much actual paper physical copies, because it is all available mostly online. Um, and we pay a lot for subscriptions so people can get it online. Um, so we're going to have that discussion going forward, but that's about it. Be interesting. And then we have chemical coalition. Um, I had to catch myself because Adrian was giving a really, really good presentation on um, OICC, it's Officer Involved Community-Based Care Coordinator. And I finally had to stop and say, I'm so busy listening to you that I forgot to write things down. So I actually have her pamphlet, her slide presentation, if anybody would like to look at it. It's exciting to know that we've got things moving forward and that um, just what they're doing with the opioid money to work with our sheriff's department and to get things set up. And um, just the, again, the way that our employees work so well together is always exciting. Um, they've been having a lot of meetings with the jail and human service medical, um, working with um, those who serve. There's some services that we have that are really good. Um, if they're gonna be only there for a couple of days, they can say, okay, let's get you some service outside of here. And then figuring out if they're going to be there for a month, what can we do to serve you while you're in? So um, it's it's they're doing some really good things with our opioid money, which is exciting to hear. Um, Central Minnesota Jobs and Training. There were some. Um, there's been some questions about we've we've had some differences in staff. Some different people are have been um, hired, and some people have left. And so just to figure out finances and that type of stuff. They're hiring um, Veracity Pro and Services that's going to work with the accounting department to just make sure, you know, when you're working with so many grants and just to make sure that everybody knows who's on what's page and, and um, getting things taken care of there. Um, they've increased some of their services with our youth, which is going to be a good thing. And again, they continue to do what they do for our adults here in Pine County. So um, are there any other meetings? 
I have one. I'm not sure if I'm going to make the arrowhead that's coming up the, next week. So I don't know if somebody else wants to. I'll, I'll whoever, if someone's going to, I'll, I'll pull probably that day. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I said in a couple other ones, we went, um, Dave and I went to the broadband task force and he had that on the Friday update, which was kind of unbelievable to me. Um, we had, um, let's see if I can find it. East Central Energy was there and they were the presenters. They do, um, so far they put in 836 miles of fiber. They've got 735 drops to houses. They are hoping to do 7,000 miles within the next five years. Um, they were asked about their materials, if they're having a hard time getting materials. And I don't know if you all remember when Justin came and talked to us and he said that they started buying the materials a year in advance because they knew that it was gonna become an issue. Um, if anybody's looking for a really good job, they're looking for fiber splicers. Um, it sounds like it would be a, a good thing to do and um, there's a huge need for that. Um, it was a good meeting to be at because he was there and it's the governor's workforce. And so that whole workforce was there and we were able to present Pine County to them and what our needs are, um, which are huge and see what we can get. And then we heard from them later and she was passing it on to some other people. So um, hopefully we'll be able to get more broadband going in Pine County. Um, with that, they brought up, and then I was at the Truth Technology and um, Committee with, with NACO. And we've got that affordable connectivity program that's out there right now, and it's winding down. They're starting to run out of money. So if people had not applied for that, um, they're taking applications up to February 6th. If you apply after February 6th um, on the 7th, you will be, it, it will not be processed. Um, but they're looking at running out of money, I want to say by, um, gosh, it was this year already. It, it's only gonna last a couple of months. They're not gonna have a lot of money for that, but it's a good program for people who don't have the finances to pay for their broadband. Um, that's all that I have for meetings. Does anybody else have any others? Yeah. Oh, after, yeah. Okay, so for our upcoming meetings, we've got a meeting that's coming up. It's called the Gray Wolf Legislative Listening Session with Congressman, Congressman Pete Stauber and Congressman Tim Tom Tiffany from Wisconsin. It's gonna be here um, next Monday um, at 6.30. So if anybody wants to come here. Yep, right here. So um, I just got this from Jack Freeby yesterday. And so if anybody wants to come for that, um, it's a good time to hear what's going on with our wolves because if any of you are farmers in the room, we have a problem. And the- Are you going to put that on the schedule? Can you put um, that on our commissioner schedule? That'd be awesome. Debbie said yes. Yeah. Yes, JJ. Yeah, is there uh, any type of virtual option for that? Not that I'm aware of. Zoom. Not that I'm aware of. JJ, there is, uh, for more information, email, we can send that to you. So then you can reach out to Jack. I'll just hey. forward, I'll forward you Jack's email from yesterday. Hey, and thank you, thank Congressman you. Yeah. Aid. yeah, he's Pete Stavers' aide. Another thing is, is um, I was sitting in a meeting the other day and we've talked about it here when we did our strategic planning on what we could do to include JJ in, in the strategic planning. But because of open meeting law, we had some issues and I was in a meeting the other day where um, we had somebody that was virtual and is it gonna create an open meeting law violation? And so I think because we have so much going on with technology, it's a whole different thought process as to how we handle that. So tomorrow, just a reminder that MCIT is putting on the Open Meeting Law webinar. And so if anybody can attend that, you do have to go to MCIT and um, register. register. Thank you for that. So if anybody can do that, that's the other thing that I had on. Is there any other agenda for today? Any other? For the good of the order. <laughs> for the good of the order, thank you. If not, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.